Yo, Wiki Crew, back with another video. First of all, I'd like to do a huge shout out to For the Love of Horror. The, their convention is being held October the 21st to the 23rd. The 21st in the evening will be a concert uh, performed by the one and only Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Stone Sour. The Saturday, I do believe, is a sellout. But if you have got your tickets, don't forget to get your autograph sessions and your photo opportunities. Purchase them in the link which will be below. The Sunday, I do believe there's still uh, tickets available, but they're going to be sold out very, very shortly. So head on over. Like I say, the, uh, the link will be in the description. Head on over there. Purchase your tickets. Get your autographed sessions, get your photo opportunities, and uh, enjoy yourself. I will be there um, going around talking to you guys, which are going to be in costume. Absolutely fantastic. Can't wait to do the convention. Um, there's the guests. There's three Michael Myerses. You've got Tommy Lee Wallace. He portrayed... Michael Myers in the scene in Halloween 1978 um, coming through the uh, closet door. Nick Castle and James Jude Courtney. I will be there and I am making sure I am getting, oh my God, I am getting this signed. Also from the 1978 Halloween, we've got PJ Souls. From Halloween 4, 5 and the Rob Zombie Halloweens, we've got Danielle Harris. Absolutely can't wait to meet her. And lots more other guests. So, like I say, in the description will be the link. Head on over, purchase your tickets and uh, have a fantastic time. Come and say hi to me. I will be going around and uh, talking to cosplayers and uh guests which have uh, turned up so until then enjoy the video which is coming next until next time bye starting with right so hi how's things with you anyway you okay i'm good i'm good it's been a really really busy day i'm still <laughs> trying to uh, catch up it's like uh, we've been rehearsing for uh, our release shows today uh so we, we have two upcoming release shows so this friday and on, on saturday here in gothenburg sweden and in stockholm uh, and we oh, thought we yeah. would play. We thought we'd play like a bunch of um, acoustic songs. So we were over at Tom's place today and uh, started rehearsing, rehearse them. So um, I got delayed. So I had to really, really drive illegally fast to get home. And I got got like five minutes late to the interview. So now it's like I'm feeling like that I'm constantly catching up for every interview <laughs> I do. So it's like yeah, still catching my breath, you know. But it's uh, well. Yeah. I'll do my best. Uh, I'll do my best to not keep you too long. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. That's all good. I'm here. Uh, I'm here now. So, and, uh, that's cool. Um. So starting right at the beginning. Um. What was you? Uh. What was it like growing up? And what was your influences music wise? Um. Uh, growing up through the years. Um. When I was a kid, I, w I was into a lot of different styles of music. It, it was every, everything from uh, like the hair metal bands in the of the, the mid '80s, like Twisted Sister in Europe, and uh, yeah, bands like the Kiss. Um, and but also, I I was a huge like Michael Jackson fan growing up too. Yeah. So so I like that and like Queen. And then uh, when when I started school, I somehow it was my mom that. I don't know why she had that, those albums, but she had some um, like guitar driven albums like um, Passion and Warfare from Steve I. And so, so I I just yeah. copied that to my Walkman on my cassette tape back then. So and started went on an 
started listening to that and then then it changed to like the the trendy techno stuff that was in the mid 90s and then for a brief while and then i got back to uh, to the to the metal um I was starting to discover like Kiss, like for real, like all the old, older stuff, and uh, then Metallica. Yeah. I got a, I became What's a huge Kiss album. Sorry. What's your favorite Kiss album? Oh, Kiss Alive Three. Is that really? a cool answer? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a brilliant album. It and is. And the DVD is fantastic. I'm a yeah. massive massive Kiss fan. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, it's normally when you ask someone what's their favorite album, they if it's the eighties, you you normally get um, uh, Creatures of the Night mm -hmm. or um, the earlier stuff. So given uh, from yourself, uh, Live Three, which is I I, I just love. I th is it Kiss Confidential the DVD? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic! It's it brilliant. Yeah. My uh, my favorite uh, out of all the videos, though, has got to be exposed. Just exposed. That yeah. is that's amazing. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was the, the very first thing which got me into Kiss. So, oh, cool. uh, no, oh yeah, I, I actually haven't seen that one. I I had the uh, the confidential VHS, and I have the uh, is it called Extreme Close Up or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. I had those two grown up. Um, oh, I thought that was great. If you haven't seen Kiss Exposed, you've got to because it's um, a lot of um, Kiss Asylum and some of the videos, um, the classic videos which are growing up through Creatures and uh, the 1980s uh, Australia tour. It's uh, but it's also funny. It's, oh, cool. it's a very funny uh, uh, documentary. So oh. it's, yeah. Um, so when did you first start learning to play an instrument? I think when I was about eight. Um, in Sweden, back in the, when I was growing up, everybody had to like try out the, one of these, like, I, I think it's called the recorder or something like that, like a wooden yeah, flute. Yeah. And it's a yeah. terrible instrument. It's like Satan's instrument. And you, you had to try that to see like how, how, how like if you were musical at all or no. Yeah. And and uh, it was so weird. And you started with that when you were seven. And if you were interested in that, you can you could like um, progress and, and attend to like start learning other instruments. Uh, yeah. So I, I started learning clarinet actually, when I, and I think I was eight when I started to do that. I, w I wanted to play saxophone, like a Kenny G style, cool. Yeah. Uh, like the saxophone that's all that's in all the uh, Lethal Weapons uh, movies, yeah. you know that cool yeah. sax. Um, but I was uh, I was too young. You you couldn't start learning saxophone until you were nine. So I had to start learning clarinet, but. Because they had the, the fa same finger settings, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then I moved on to clarinet, that to saxophone one year later when I was nine. And I yeah. think I just played that for a year. And then um, accidentally I, I discovered drums and that was it. So uh, I, I, I remember in school for me. And uh, yeah, the recorder, you do, 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 oh, I hated it, hated yeah. it. And um, I, I said to my uh, to my parents, I said, "Oh, uh, I, I want I want to learn to play. Um, I want a bass guitar." And uh, they went, "No, you're not having a bass guitar. You're having electric. If you're gonna have a guitar, you're gonna have an electric guitar because uh, nobody plays the bass." And I'm going, "No, but I want to be Gene Simmons. Oh yeah, Gene Simmons. Of course." So, um, they were like, "No, you're having a guitar." So they bought me a guitar, and. Uh, I, I decided to take up music in school, and uh, they said, "No, you can't play guitar. Yeah, you can't. You can't play the guitar. You're gonna have to have a trombone." <laughs> oh, I, I was like, I, "Yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't but, want to learn that." <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah. I, I I started, uh, and the only person, my friend, 
You're, he was the only person who he wanted to play drums and he was allowed to play drums. Everyone else had to have these stupid bloody brass instruments. <laughs> and we were like, you don't want that. Yeah. What are you, what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to be in the school band. I'm not. Yeah. No. <laughs> but it's, uh, I, I, I packed up uh, music after that. I, I was like, nah, I'm not learning it for bone. Yeah, yeah, that's a shame. So, yeah, so it's, uh, it's weird. It's also weird how quickly things like get that can can uh, turn on on you. Yeah, like, you're super. That's all you wanted to do, like play bass. You ended up yeah. with the trump trombone. Yeah, um, like, I I did eventually learn to play bass, and uh, I, I was I, I was over the, but I, I self taught myself. Oh, okay. Uh, I went out and I bought like um, um, books, and uh, one of the first uh, songs I learned to play was "Firehouse" by um, by Kiss. I I did have a few guitar lessons, so the um, guitar wise, you've got all the classics, "Smoke on the Water" and "Eye of the Tiger" and all that. So they yeah. were the songs um, I grew up listening listening to and learning to play but all right I bought myself bass yeah so okay I, I eventually got there yeah <laughs> yeah you see well, it's never too late no no it's the the biggest damn journey going to, to yeah. get the bass. yeah right yeah um uh moving on to the um the new album that's coming out on friday um i did my review today and I don't know if I should give you the marks, but uh, yeah, I'll give you the marks. I give it 10 of the 10. Oh my God, cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, Thank you. It, it is absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Man. I, Thank you. I'm, uh, I am super proud of uh, the, the like both the work we we put into this and uh, like, yeah, like we always do. It's but the, the results, I think we, we really, really, really um, kind of what do you say yeah we um, yeah i'm super proud of it let's leave that at that we uh, really it's, it's got good. out what what we were aiming to get out of this album so yeah yeah it's, thank um, you oh no, yeah no thank you you're, you're the guys which uh wrote it it's absolutely fantastic i've so I know we're only coming up to halfway through the year, but I, I put it in my top five of the albums of the of twenty twenty two. Oh, it, wow. it, it is. I I it, I can't give it enough praise. It's a brilliant album. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, um, can you tell me a bit about um uh the recording and the writing of the album? Uh, yeah, we we started writing it uh, almost. I mean, directly after the the Escape of the Phoenix was released, um, because we had uh, the situation where we, um, if our previous record label didn't want to sign us for another album, so we yeah. need to find another label and and find something that we we felt were. Um, interested in in working together with us and uh, felt, felt really like serious about what we do and something that we we could have a good relationship as well so it is so and we found napalm and they they felt very very in, interesting it, it felt like a cool and interesting label to uh, to work together with yeah so and when we were about to like sign the the deal with them we we realized that okay but if when we're signing the deal they were they want to have a, an album to promote of course otherwise it wouldn't make sense so it's like but we all already released this escape of the phoenix album like yesterday it's just like felt like that do we have another album within us this soon yeah so but we just we we just uh, went for it and then we said, okay, from now on, uh, we we give ourselves like two weeks to go home, everybody on their own, and start writing uh, just ideas, pumping out ideas, and then we meet back in our re rehearsal studio 
two weeks later to present all the idea ideas and go through them and then start working on an album based on those yeah. ideas. And everybody just brought so much to the table. It was fantastic and really inspiring to see um, how people how uh, like engaged and people were. Um, yeah. So uh, we had so many ideas to choose from and it's uh, yeah, we didn't know where to start in the beginning, so we just had to figure out, OK, which are the everyone's top like three favorite ideas? And then yeah. we, we picked those and then we um, had to filter down those ideas even more. And then we just picked started with one song and then started writing like uh, yeah. uh, a song. And then we just took the next idea and then we took the next idea and then all of a sudden the, the songs were piling up and and yeah. uh, turning out to an album. Oh, it's it's fantastic! It's a brilliant album. Oh, cool! Thank you. Um, this coming September, you're starting uh, a European tour. Um, starting in the UK, I do believe. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, is it, have you done any um, concerts to date yet, or you still, um, or did you wait until the album was finished before you started looking at doing dates? We actually were in Finland this uh, past weekend, and that, that was the first uh, like premiere of the new songs. So we played all the the three singles uh, from the the new upcoming album. Um, and it felt really, really cool. The audience seems to appreciate it a lot. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of a rocky start, the first show, because it was everything so new and you had to have so many things in mind when you, you, you're uh, like playing an, a brand new song live. It's like a bunch of nerves involved and it's, yeah. it hasn't got um, comfortable with, with you yet in a live setting. So it's like, uh, yeah, a bit shaky but during the considering the circumstances i think we we, we did a good job and it uh, yeah. the more we played played them the, the better they felt so um yeah we got to the chance to do three shows in finland this past weekend and uh, now we're doing the two acoustic shows this weekend in in sweden and then we have a couple of the summer festivals like i don't know maybe five so it's not crazy so uh, we have some time to fill out the, some of the new songs, but for the tour, we're going to, um, we have to add a bunch of songs, both from this new album and from the, the past, the, the previous album, because uh, we didn't have any chance to tour on, on the Escape of the Phoenix, and we don't want to feel that that album went to waste in the live setting. Yeah. So we have to be smart when we um, write the set list for, for that tour. But it's going to be great. We're working on it right now, so it's going to uh, it's coming together. Uh, brilliant! I can't, I can't wait. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, I, I'm gonna I, I'd be down at the um, Thekla, I think it's Thekla or Thekla, um, Bristol. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed, I'll be at that concert. Um, finally, what's your what plans have you got going forward? Um, you say you are. Uh, well, you, you've got the uh, European tour coming up in September. Is Have you looked for anything for 2023? Maybe um, uh, a bigger tour um, globally or? We'll see. I think we um, we have to. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we, I mean, we're, we're working on it. And uh, I think the, the, the plan is to, to visit US like um, I, I'm not sure if we have the time to do it this year, but uh, so hopefully like in, in the beginning of next year or spring next year. And then yeah. I'm, I'm guessing uh, if the world is staying as it as it does or it, if it uh, gets uh, better, the, the summer festival will be opened next year. So uh, and I'm, I'm quite sure that we will have a bunch of festivals next year. So, uh, this has been absolutely fantastic speaking to you. Um, I'm, uh, I hope to be, well, like I say, fingers crossed, I'll be at the Bristol show, so I get to um, have a chat with you then. And uh, 
and, and good luck with the album launch on on Friday. It's I, I know for a fact. Well, when I say I know for a fact, I'm putting my hand on my heart to say that every ever grey uh, fan will love your new album because it's fantastic. Oh, cool! Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, good luck, yeah. in the future, and um, hope to uh, see you in Bristol. Yes, well, definitely. Thank, thank you for this. This has been fantastic. I'd let you um, go and have a little bit of a break before your next interview. And yeah, yeah, I got 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you for this, and it's been brilliant, and I'll see you soon. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, take care. Have a good one, mate. And yourself.